When we sing this hymn, Father, we thy children bless thee, I was thinking of three verses in the New Testament that I'd like to read with you. And I'll be brief. The first verse is in Ephesians 1, verse 3. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The second verse is in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Also verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. I'll also read verse 4. Who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. And then one more verse, and that is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 also. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from among the dead. Just these three portions before us go well together with this hymn, Father, we thy children bless thee. What I would like to highlight this time is that when we look back eternity past in Ephesians 1 we see the Father and we see his eternal plans now I don't know all of you here I knew many of you but can everyone really say here I know this God as my Father Ephesians 1 verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ all believers can say this. But there may be here those who cannot say that yet because they are not believers. And so even a verse like this would be a call to you. Come now in repentance so that you also with us can bless God the Father. It means speak well of Him. As a sinner... You can only hate God. You are God's enemy. As redeemed, as believers, as saints, as children of God, as the hymn says, and not even children, we are also sons of God. We can say, Abba, Father. We can bless Him. We can speak well of Him instead of cursing. Now, this God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that goes back to eter eternity past, has thought of us, according to verse 4, before the foundation of the world, and has chosen us, that is, all the believers, chosen us and adopted us to be sons for himself. And so, what our privilege is as believers, we may be God's children to represent him in this world, in this world where we are, a world marked by violence, by hatred, by sin, by rebellion. In this very same world, we are not belonging to this world anymore. We as believers are taken out of this world to be a company that can address God as Father and say, Abba Father, that can speak to God and that can speak of God well and speak to him well in terms of blessing. He has blessed us. He has filled us, a vessel to the overflowing. Every believer here is like a vessel filled with the Holy Spirit and can say, Abba, Father, can speak well of God and can bless God. That is what verse 3 says. Here we are with the Apostle Paul, once an enemy of God. Did you know that? Even when he was persecuting the believers, he thought he was doing this to serve God, to be an instrument in God's hand. But he was God's enemy. 
the Lord Jesus appeared to him from the glory and he arrested him and everything changed in his life. And I pray that if there is someone here yet who has not come to repentance, that you may be arrested tonight by the Lord Jesus. He is in the glory. He has all authority. He is Lord of heaven and earth. And he is the one who wants to have you also. And he has us as believers already for himself. It is through the Lord Jesus that we may bless his God with our God, his Father, our Father. And so my point here in Ephesians 1 is, when according to the hymn, Father, we thy children bless thee, we see here a relationship we have with God, and this relationship was planned. This was already thought of by God before the foundation of the world. This is mind-boggling. We cannot understand this. But faith accepts it and says amen to that. Not only that, faith will respond to that. And that is what faith does here in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father is a response from a faithful heart, from a believing heart, from a heart that has been filled with God's love. The love of God has been shed abroad into our hearts, Romans 5, 5, through the Holy Spirit whom we have received. And so we are now vessels that can respond to the love of God the Father and to the love of the Lord Jesus who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies in Christ. That means all. All the blessings that are in God's heart are our blessings. Heavenly, spiritual, eternal blessings. These blessings no one can take away. This is our possession. Isn't that amazing? And according to what God has given us, which is really something that no one take, can take away, according to that, we may give a response. So there's much more in this chapter. I will not go into that. Then we go to chapter Second uh, Corinthians 1. Second Corinthians 1. So the second epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 1, where Paul says the same words, Blessed be God. Now if you see the context, if you read the whole chapter, you see Paul was in a lot of trouble. And still he could say, Blessed be God. Blessed the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He could say that. He had been in a very difficult situation in Ephesus. His life was in danger. If you read the whole chapter of Second Corinthians 1, you see that he saw himself already dead. And not only himself, he saw the whole testimony wiped out there. He saw the power of the enemy, and he saw it was all over. No, it didn't stop there. What did he learn? Then he looked to God, and then he put his trust in God. Now, that is what we need to do in our situation today. We need exactly to do what Paul did, put our trust in God. He says it a little bit later in the same chapter, who raises from among the dead. Um, in verse 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us, verse 10, from, such, from so great a death, and thus deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. What did Paul learn? He was in a very difficult situation. God helped him. That gave him trust that God would also lead him on. And God did. And that would give him also trust that in connection with the future, as long as the Lord would leave him here, he would be the great deliverer. The God who raised the Lord Jesus from among the dead, Ephesians 2 gives much more about that. That same God has worked in you and me in power. And that same God is working also in our circumstances. You may have very difficult circumstances, but who is really in charge? It's God. So we have to give him the charge. We have to give him that place. If we are in a difficult situation that we don't know where to turn, to whom should we turn? To the one who is able to deal with everything. And we, the faster we get to that point, the better it is. Now here, what does Paul say in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3? 
Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies or compassions. Mercy is in view of circumstances. Mercy is in view of needs, of miserable situations. Paul was in a miserable situation and God, the God of mercy, he showed mercy. In Hebrews 4, and that is a privilege we all have, in verse 15, 16, we see we have free access to the throne of grace and we can ask for mercy, to receive mercy. In view of difficult circumstances, maybe a sickness, maybe you lost a job, maybe whatever the situation is, desperate situation, the resources are right there. God is the Father of mercies. He can provide exactly what we need in view of our circumstances. And not only that, he is the God of all comfort. Notice in verse 3, it doesn't say the God of comfort, which is true also. It says the God of all comfort. This God has sent the Holy Spirit to be the comforter. This God has glorified the Lord Jesus who is in the heavens and is our comforter to help us, to be alongside, to help us right where we are. This is the God who is our God and to whom we may speak in blessing. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is, if I may say it, the result of experience. What we have in Ephesians 1 is in connection with the position we have in Christ. We can bless God. Now we have, like Paul has gone through very difficult circumstances and he can bless God. But it doesn't stop there. What does he say in verse 4? Who comforts us in all our tribulation. What does that mean? You cannot be in a situation where God cannot comfort you. Isn't that, isn't that great? You can be in whatever situation it is, even caused by your own mistakes. You cannot be in any situation where you cannot get comfort from God. There's only one who was in a situation where he did not receive comfort from God. And that was the Lord Jesus on the cross in the three hours of darkness that he was forsaken by God, the only holy one, righteous one, forsaken by God. That was because he took our sins upon himself at that moment. You cannot fathom that. But now, God is the God of comfort, he's the God of all comfort, and he is the one who comforts in all tribulation, or in all affliction, in all trouble, whatever it is. That is the God who provides help. Psalm 46 says he's a present help. He is right there to help and to comfort. And now Paul learned something. Through this process, what happened? Paul became himself a vessel of comfort. Isn't that wonderful? Paul had gone through this tremendous distress and hardship and trouble. Now, God had formed Paul to be a vessel fit for the master's use so that Paul could be a vessel to bring comfort to others. Now, just a question. Maybe you have gone through great trouble, through great hardship, and you have received strength from God and help from God. You may be an instrument in God's hand to comfort others who are in great need. That's what Paul is saying here. Now the last verse in, that we read in 1 Peter 1 helps us to look forward. And again it is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy or manifold great mercy has begotten us again. Now again, I would say a word to some here who may not have not have been saved yet. You may say, okay, this God has to do that. I cannot do anything. Amen. That's one side of the story. Your side is to repent. And the moment you repent, that moment you are born again. This is a mystery. I cannot explain it to you. Nobody can explain that to you. But from this perspective now, to read again, God has begotten us or regenerated us 
And that is a work from God, from above, like the Lord Jesus explained to, uh, to Nicodemus in John 3, from a new source. We've been born again from a new source, from above. And that is also according to God's mercy, to his compassion. And again, I would point to the Apostle Paul as our uh, example in this. He speaks about it in 1 Timothy 1, for example, how he received mercy. That was God's mercy to take a man like that, a very religious man, a man who thought he was a great servant, yet he was an enemy. God showed mercy to him. He was born again from a new source. This is not regeneration through baptism or whatever uh, construction you may make. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. And it is in view of a living hope. The hope is connected with Christ. He is our hope. He is the blessed hope. He is a living hope. We are in a scene of darkness. The dominion of death is around us. Yet, all believers here have received this life, and Christ is our life. And so we have now also a hope. We look forward. The hope is connected with the future. But it is all based, and it is through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from among the dead. God has placed us as believers on a new foundation. The foundation is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from among the dead. And so, all believers here, God doesn't see us anymore, what we are in ourselves. God sees us now what we, as we are in Christ, based on the work that Christ has accomplished. And so here we look forward Ephesians 1, we look uh, eternity past, and we see the magnificent counsel of God to have many sons for himself. In 2 Corinthians 1, we see we are here in the wilderness, in this world, full of rebellion, full of trouble. We look up to him. He is our helper. And now, here we look forward. God has placed us on a new foundation. Although we are in this world, we are on a new foundation. And we are linked with the Lord Jesus our risen Lord and who is glorified and we have him as our living hope and we can say this Peter blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ how wonderful if you can say with us blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ you know one thing you will never stop doing that you will continue for the whole eternity and may we bless the God and Father more and more Amen